Today we're going to be looking at this water cooler from Silentium PC or SPC for short. It's the Navis F240 and it's basically a water cooler with a 240 millimeter radiator. Okay, the front of the box is pretty straightforward. It tells you it's a Silentium PC or SPC 330. It's the Navis F240 and obviously it's a water cooler or it says CPU cooler on there and it will work on all your modern day sockets including intel socket 1700 the front back and sides of the box have lots of information from these full specifications including measurements of each part it's got a qr code on there you can scan for the manual and more information which is good and it tells you a bit of information about it being an all-in-one water cooler pwm controlled pump uh, extended fan speed range and different bits and bobs like that Okay, so the contents of the box is pretty straightforward. You've got a piece of foam, piece of card, whatever everything came in. Three plastic bags, one were on the radiator, one was on the pump, and the other one was where all the cables and everything came in. There is also another plastic bag which has got some more screws in as well. You've got, obviously, the water cooler. You've got the manual. You've got this PWM cable for the fan from the radiator. You just hook it up here and then plug it into your motherboard, as well as the one what's on the actual water block or the pump, which is there. And you also need to connect it up to a SATA connection. We'll look at that a bit more in a few minutes. You've got your back plate, which you'll obviously screw onto the back of your board and then put the screws through it and so forth. A few springs, fasteners, thermal paste. That's pretty much it for the box. Okay, so let's have a look at the cooler itself. So let's start with the block. Let's start at the bottom. You've got a piece of plastic on the bottom where you've got your plate. That does look copper, but it's very scratched and marked. I wouldn't be surprised if this has been used before. I'm not sure if it has or not. It was in a sealed box, but it does look like it has been used before unless they've done it for testing, but there is some marks on there. So that's not the, not the best. Don't get me wrong, nothing thermal paste isn't going to cover up and so forth but still it does look like it has been attached to something in the past before. Uh, as we said, you've got a PWM cable here, so you can plug that into your motherboard. And then you've also got a SATA connection to power it, which will plug into obviously your power supply. You've got a nice braided cable all the way up to the actual radiator and fans, which is nice. And then you have a cable connection there for the PWM, that's the fan, uh, which are both linked together where you would hook up the second cable to it. I'm not sure why it's not pre-put on, to be honest with you, because it's not as if you won't need it. And then you'll plug that bit into your motherboard as well to power the fans and obviously so it can adjust the speeds and so forth. You've got two fans on there. So they've got this sort of uh, teeth design on it. I'm guessing that'll hurt if you trap your fingers in there, uh, but otherwise they look pretty good, pretty standard for a fan in all honesty uh normal sort of thickness i'm guessing they're probably about 26 27 millimeters thick then you've got the radiator itself and the radiator you can just about see through it so you um, so it should be okay for passing little bits of dust and stuff but obviously with any radiators you really need to clean them quite often we get it quite often where people uh processes have overheated and so forth because the radiator is that full of dirt the fan's not able to blow through air through it to cool it down but otherwise the water cooler looks all right so let's just have a look at the top you can't really see much on the top i don't think it has water any rgb lighting on there it does have their logo in the center on there and it sort of looks like sort of a brushed aluminium style uh, but otherwise it's pretty much black plastic and which is a matte and then a slightly shiny plastic which does pick up fingerprints very easily so down to testing, we're testing the Navis against the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, the 240mm version, so they're both the same size. All testing was done using Cinebench for 30 minutes. We got the average and max temperatures over that time. In the first test, we did it with the fan speed running at 50%. That also includes the pump running at 50% as well. And as you can see here, the temperatures were very similar, 72 degrees and 73 degrees. But the Navis just beat it. Uh, beat out the Arctic liquid freezer by one degree. Now things change a little bit when we look at the maximum temperature rather than the average temperature. The maximum temperature of the Navis got up to 90 degrees, where the Arctic liquid freezer got up to 85. So it looks like averaging out, the Navis is a little bit better, but unfortunately peaks a little bit higher 
when we're doing our testing. Now going on to the next test, we do the same thing again, but we stick the fans on 100% speed. And it's a similar story here, but a little bit of a bigger um, difference between temperatures. The Navis got 66 degrees Celsius, where the Liquid Freezer 2 got 70 degrees. So it was four degrees cooler, which was pretty good. And again, this is with the fan running flat out at 100%. But as you'll see on the next slide, it's sort of a row re roll reversal again, where the liquid freezer has the slightly lower max temperature and then Navis is slightly higher. But again, it's only one degree difference. So if you average it between the two, you'll find that they both work out in reality very similar. So it's all down to sort of what price you can get these for. And what I can see, the price very similar. So you'll just have to have a look, see which best best value one you can find. Obviously, there are differences between the two coolers. For example, uh, you've got that VRM cooler on the Arctic freezer, and they have a few different other options available in colors as well as in RGB. But you also have the Navis in different variations as well, where they have got RGB versions as well. So it's really down to preference, and they perform pretty well. They're both able to cool down the 12700K processor with no problem at all. So I can't do anything but recommend both of these coolers. A quick comment on how loud they actually were. Both coolers, you couldn't actually hear them over the rest of the case fans at 50% speed. And even at 100% speed, they were both very quiet. If I was pick one, which would say which one's the quietest of the two, I'd probably say the Navis was just, and I mean just, but again, it's one of those things that were very similar and our decibel reader didn't really pick up much of a difference between the two. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to see more SPC or Silentium PC reviews we've done in the past, click this box right up here. Otherwise, if you want to see other coolers we've reviewed in the past, click this box down here. Yep, that one just right there. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. But before you go, make sure you give us a thumbs up, like and comment in the comment section below. See you next time.